Hello, faithful viewer. I'm Phil Collinson, the uh, producer of Doctor Who. And uh, I'm James Strong, the director of episodes four and five. And uh, this uh, episode, obviously, is episode four, Daleks in Manhattan. Um, and we actually went to Manhattan, James. We did go to Manhattan briefly. Uh, the majority of the, of the shooting took place in, uh, obviously, lovely Cardiff. Uh, but we did actually get to New York. We did. Four days. But we'll uh, talk about that as we get there. This little sequence, the theatre, was built in Headland School in Panas, which uh, we have visited several times before, most probably... Famously, I suppose, it was um, Mr. Sneed's Undertakers in Series 1, uh, and it was where the, the, the cellar where the werewolf was chained up in Series 2. Is it I your think, most yeah, visited then. location, do you think? Um, up there, top possibly. five? Possibly. It's up there in the top five, I think. Yeah, yeah, I've been there a few times. It's been all kinds of things, and indeed a theatre before, Charles Dickens' dressing room as well. Oh, now, look, this is Ryan Cairns, who's playing a Laszlo. Yeah. Take a good look at his face, because it won't be his face for much longer. <laughs> Poor old Ryan. With a lovely Miranda Raisin here. Um, yeah. This is the backstage of our theatre, which we constructed from a few different locations. The Headlands here and then um, another real theatre that we'll get to later. But um, there, is, there he is. There he is. Yeah, this tiny little set this was, wasn't yeah, it? Sort of in a side room. But it kind of looked like a dressing room. It felt like a real dressing yeah. room, which was, um, which was great. Beautifully... Um, shot I think this this length of this corridor is great I love how you kind of take him all that way down there it's yeah. brilliant we tried to make it look as big as possible I mean with the whole episode really we tried to make the whole give it that because it's all 30s America that and give it that kind of Hollywood classic Hollywood feel of, of a big you know Hollywood experience from the 30s so it's kind of lots of big wide angle frames and um, lots of long if a corridor's long then it's really long yeah. and if it's you know if it's dark it's really dark and really big and wide and stuff so here we are again in the headlands and this is into the prop store which is um, which is kind of one of our lot of sets was linked into another set and we've kind of had to do a lot of you saw the sort of the drain cover there and that's a link to another set which we've built elsewhere so there's lots of kind of going from one location to another mm. and pretending that it's the same place it was, that. It was that a bit a of a jigsaw this yeah. wasn't it um, it was a heck of a jigsaw and also particularly because uh, the two, because it's a two-parter as well, we we had an awful lot of locations in this. It was a real, actually with the schedule with New York and with all the different locations and costumes and different people and everything, it was a real nightmare, which is a bit like that, Wills. Yeah, a, pig a bit of a nightmare, pig man in a pig mask. Paul Casey. Yes, hero pig. Hero pig Paul Casey, who's been just about everything. He's in every, is he, is he in most? He's in most episodes yeah, in lesson. some way, shape or form, yeah, yeah. But what's brilliant is he does bring quite literally something different to every role. He takes on whatever animal it is, whatever monster it is. And um, although I, I, what I love in this pig, his eyes are so sad. Paul's yeah. got such lovely eyes. Yes, and with yes, that yes, pig yes. monster on, yeah. he suddenly looks like this sort of. It, it gives you a lot of empathy towards the. Um, yeah. um, what's happening? Darling's Manhattan, written by Helen Rayner. Helen Rayner, our previously our script editor, who delivered two marvelous episodes for us. Now here's the magic of television. Here, yeah. this is a mixture of. This is Panath, a Panath. school playing field in Panath. Where they step out, there's yeah. David and Freema, which is where we shot their bit of it. But then we cut to the wider shot right now, and we are in New Real York. Manhattan. Yeah. So we had to sort of try and match the stone, really, of the wall that the TARDIS is standing against um, with the stone and on the actual location. Um, when, we were, when we were talking about going there, I it was originally written on, the, on a rooftop, wasn't it? It was. And I thought, I thought there's a stone like that that I've seen. It's particular to Cardiff and the Welsh, this sort of area, which to me reminded me of the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. And so that's oh, why I suggested it to, oh, to Helen and, and you. And, and you went, you, fool, oh, you agreed, you fools. But I even, no, it's, it's brilliant. I'm so yeah. glad they materialised there, though, right yes. underneath. No, it's fabulous. Slap bang at the front. And so, yeah, we've got Freema and David against the green screen there looking at a view that we shot in Manhattan. I'm sorry, David and Freema. I wish you had been there with us. Yes, sadly, it was a very... We had a marvellous time. <laughs> <laughs> we did have a marvellous time, and the weather was fantastic. And, and we worked like dogs, of course. Oh, we worked non-stop, like dogs. Uh, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Both um, of us had to had to shrug around with sort of equipment and tripods, and, oh, it was just a nightmare. jet lag was terrible. We oh, didn't really know where we were coming or going. And absolutely. <laughs> really? <laughs> non-stop. And if but... you believe that, you believe absolutely anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not a word. Now, this is Central Park. Of course, it's not actually... It's Butte Park, Butte in, Park Carf, in Cardiff, Cardiff which yeah. doubles up for... And actually, remarkably, the foliage and the trees actually, just completely by coincidence, match what was kind of in Central Park where we shot 
the plate which is behind you. So some of those trees are Central Park and some of them are, and, are and Cardiff. And the buildings are um, Central Park. Yeah. And um, sort of the, the marvellous mill have blended the two together. Um, w- this is a, a wide shot of our set for Hooverville, which we're in now, which has been slightly extended by the mill, so mm-hmm. to paint more tents in and make it look bigger. Um, uh, and, and, yeah, we're still here in, in Butte Park in Cardiff. And here we're now in Hooverville. This, I think, is for me, was the best the best set. I mean, the art department are amazing. They do wonderful sets every single time. But this is my favourite, I think. I love yeah. the colours, the textures, the kind of all the detail, all the different bits of furniture, the possessions. Chap at the back coming out the toilet there. <laughs> 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 I've never noticed that yes, before. Yes, exactly, yeah. Goodness me, how did you slip that through <laughs> the net? I think he was sat, one earlier take, he sat actually <laughs> for the whole scene. But, Reading um, a newspaper. I think he did come on set and told us to get him out. <laughs> Get, get, get him out of the toilet. Can we get him out of the kludgy, please? Dear God. Now, what Hugh Hoover Corshi? was trying to... Hugh, Hugh, the lovely Hugh Corshi. But I wanted to make Hugh like it felt like it was busy, and obviously mm. we had we had a lot of extras here, but even then, when you put them in a set that's as big as this, they kind of... The French dick. Is that a period loaf? Yeah, period, is it, I think, I think it's probably from the bakers around the corner. And so this... Um, I mean, we're not making anything up here. I mean, this isn't dramatic license. These people lived yep. like this in Central Park Absolutely. in the Depression because they lost their homes, they lost everything, um, some people, and had nowhere to go. Um, and, and they would they'd set up tents and camps and sort of bring everything that they possessed with them, really. It's kind of hard to imagine that, uh, uh, people starving on the streets, especially mm. now when you go to Manhattan and you see how yeah. wealthy it is and, and, and everything that's around there and everything they were achieving at that time is amazing. Well, what's interesting, the architecture, a lot of it hasn't changed. So you had this mm. terrible juxtaposition of a huge wealth and extreme poverty, mm. literally side by side. And if, mm. if you've been to Manhattan, it's a small place. And yeah. so you've got Hooverville right next door to Fifth Avenue and, and, and indeed the Empire State Building, which... Yeah. Um, you know, the Solomon, Hugh's character, kind of asked the question, how come they can do this and there's people starving? Yeah. I love uh, that about Doctor Who, that you can just d- d- tell stories like this and kind of almost educate. I mean, I had no idea this happened. Mm. The Russell is like glimpsing history like through, through a no- crack in an open door. Yeah, we kind is. of don't go, Doctor Who kind of lands and looks looks at history, but just slightly from an angle, so we're not yeah. looking at it head on. And stuff. Bang in a way that you just can't imagine. So then again, a matte painting, Hugh shot against the green screen and the, the the some of the trees in the Empire State Building painted in, and this is the actual real Empire State Building, and you see it more in the in the in the next shot, which is a series of paint of shots that we did, this one here that we did actually from a bar. Basically, <laughs> 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 to York, but it was from a rooftop bar. Yes, because the position, of, uh, the camera position, Absolutely. was just so perfect in that bar, oh, James. It would it? have never been possible to. Have it would have been shots. possible to get that shot from anywhere other than that bar. The bar that was. Open, obviously, <laughs> um, but but of yes. course we only had soft drink. Yes, of course, yeah, the BBC. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, in in our office set. Now, what's interesting if you look at the back of the set, there you can see all the wind machines working, which give us the impression and and all the cloth and stuff moving. So, just give that kind of subliminal impression that we're up right at the top right of the Empire. And it's, it's windy, yeah. and it really works actually. I love this. See, this is my favourite set. I adore. I think it's this beautiful. set was really lovely and just so clever. Particularly later when we see them standing on the edge of it, and it, I, I just think it works so brilliantly to keep it open like that and sort of semi-finished. Now we've got coming back obviously right now one of our one of the most sort of famous and iconic characters in Doctor history. Right. Well, how do you treat them and sort of when they come back and all that sort of stuff? Because well, I sort of think. In a way, they've got to come back every year. Mm. That's my feeling. And they sort of have been in every series we've made so far. And I, I, I sort of think that's right. They're so synonymous with Doctor yeah. Who. And and also I think the brilliant thing now, and you know, in tying them into the Time War and, and, and the death of the Doctor's civilization, th- that sort of arch enemy kind of status has been taken to a different level. Mm. And I think there's a real emotional, you know, nothing can quite put him on the back foot like yeah. the Daleks. And, yeah. you know, even though you always know he's going to beat them, you know it's going to be a yes. really hard fight for him and, yes. and, and full of so many memories and emotion. And, 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 so, and I sort of think every series obviously needs that, that, that input, input, input from, um, 
from their villain or their whatever. But I think we just get it so brilliantly with the Daleks. And they're just so... I mean, look at it. It's amazing. There's nothing like that. They just look so, fantastic, don't mm. they? they look, and what's interesting is the colour scheme of this episode also just suits the Daleks. They look fantastic. Yeah, they they're, do, don't they? The muted palette of the colours, the browns and the golds and the, yeah. and the bronze and stuff. They look, they look fantastic. That's my favourite line in the whole episode, Helen, Raina, if you're listening. The Empire State Building must be finished in time. <laughs> <laughs> Only in no, the, Only. the Daleks are building the Empire State Building. It's incredible. I love it. I was so excited when I kind of heard the idea for this two parts. I just thought, what a brilliant idea. Just brilliant yeah. that they would be behind that. <laughs> it's brilliant. So here we are back in Hooverville, which um, we had to reshoot that close up. Do you remember? It's, did, didn't it? Oh, we had a few problems misspell. with, with, with misspelled, and then it came back. Wasn't there and an S got, on Hooverville, 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 and then like and then that. it came back, and then it, then they misspelled cities as well. Uh, so right. it went through a few different, um, few different incarnations. Issues. That uh, particular, but but bless them, the art department they never really get it wrong. But um, no. No. Um, it's funny they say. I always imagined we'd shoot these tent scenes in a studio in the dry, and we didn't, did we? We shot no, them out there in the in the forest. So literally, that's when we're shooting these scenes. We're all stood outside in the pouring, pouring rain. rain. And James Strong said, <laughs> "Well, we'll have to do it there because we'll glimpse through the tent flap." Where do you glimpse through the tent well, flap? Well, I think actually that was the plan, and then obviously <laughs> our schedule, and then this is shot obviously I think at night, so we'd lost the light. <laughs> So by the end, so Ernie Vince was outside with a mag torch. A <laughs> but great there is, big I mean, torch if you, if you stay to the end of the scene, you do see Andrew oh, comes okay. in. There he is. Look. He comes in against <laughs> a grey sky. What are you talking about? Unfortunately, like, you, you can, cloth? if you look closely, you can glimpse a bit of yeah, foliage outside. Um, it wheeled it in. It's more for the but actors anyway, to feel like they're really there. I'm glad um, you were happy, James. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you were. I have to say, I think a special notice to the to the extras in this. Uh, block yes. actually I yeah. think they are superb I do here. too I especially in Hooverville they yeah. kind of got into the whole vibe of the whole place and they're reacting to the scene they're part of it and they're just so much more than extras I mean, it sounds obvious but yeah. they really added an extra dimension to the whole place and you really believe that they were actually from you know fr- they were part of Hooverville yeah. and they were part of, of the story and, and especially as later as Hooverville you know becomes under attack and all that what happens there they they all of these faces, they just become such characters. Yeah, it's great. I think um, we should pay particular... Um, uh, I, I should mention Peter Bennett and, and Sarah Davis, who are our first and God third them. assistant directors who work very closely with the extras and set that kind of action yeah. up with you, don't they, James? And they work so hard on this episode. Yeah. Because, th- th- I mean, the extras bill on this was quite high because there were so many big scenes with lots of people in them. Um, they all take an awful lot of wrangling, and and it, it, it looks pe- amazing. Yeah, now I remember Peter's first list of how many extras oh, yeah, yeah. Were, were proposed to be in each scene, and it was it was. I think I shrieked cast. with laughter, didn't I? <laughs> yes. I seem to remember. <laughs> Made it was a paper after you fell off your chair. <laughs> it back out of my office at you. I seem to remember. <laughs> <laughs> now this is one heck of a set. I yes. Think. I mean, this was only... It was small, really, yeah. wasn't it? It was a sort of a, a horseshoe shape, I yeah, seem to yeah, remember. Yeah, so what they're doing a lot of the time is kind of walking up and down the same bit, bit of, of the ton- bit of corridor, but with the dressing, they've changed it and with, the, and with the direction of the angle of the camera. We made it look as if it's, well, four times the size and, and, and four times the length and, and all different parts Tiny of the same maze set. of tunnels. And it works really well, actually. And beautifully lit by Ernie, I think. It it's does look gorgeous. Fantastic. The yeah. light coming in through the grills and just all of it. be just stunning, I think. The water. Yeah. I came in and I remember seeing the water drips there and I just think thinking, that's so beautiful. And what was interesting, because it was, it was a set. So we're inside a studio, which is warm yeah. and kind of air-conditioned and heated most of the time. And um, But you go into the tunnel... Just literally in the set, and it was cold, and it was wet. It was, wasn't it? It because, really felt like it. Yeah, the the special effects guys had water coming through, and it after a few days, it felt like you were underground, and and um, really were amazing. Yeah, it's a it's a wonderful piece of work. I think that kind of had to be because we spend quite a lot of time down here. Yes. I know, but but it, 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 it's, I will, I'm always astonished by, by Ed, well, it, Ed and his team because yeah. I what remember what we, were, we were looking for it initially as a location yeah. and actually you'd think well actually some sewers or some tunnels yeah. would be quite an easy thing to find and actually it was we did just found nothing, nothing yeah, well there were massive health and safety yeah. implications as well in going into tunnels I mean you yeah. can get round it but it is very difficult you know. and what we had to do was so much it would have been so yeah. uncomfortable oh, it would have been miserable oh. wouldn't it 
would have been miserable. Not so that we he, don't like misery. So. so he went to the park <laughs> for five days and it poured down <laughs> all the time. Yeah. But there we go. More of that later. So we're back up in our uh, Empire State Building set again. Here? Yep. And these are our... Uh, what we tried to do with this block, really, was cast kind of authentic American actors or people who had lived in America. Or got a few, they did like two guys here. Um, Joe Montana, who's the, the ball guy. Who's name, been name. in Doctor Who before. He was in oh. um, our first Dalek story. Was he? Which was set in a Utah base. He was. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Played a different character, a soldier, and we liked him so much, and we just thought, oh, let's have him back. But what was great was coming on set and hearing all these American voices, mm. American actors, yeah. and American kind of set in America. Well, lovely Eric there is um, is from America, isn't he? I mean, he grew up there and, and um, was educated there a bit and came over here to drama school, I think. He is American. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's great and I, I, I do have to um, I love the bit of acting here with the guys picking up this um, bit of Dalek skirt which yeah. they do a very, yeah. very good job of making it look making like it look it's really, really heavy. heavy Yeah, they do. and actually it's about the size of a tissue box yeah, 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 this is the weight yeah. of it really so. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, um, we should mention Eric because he had such a tough time on this episode once he well, well on these two episodes really once he uh, well, we'll see at the end, got his we? prosthetic on yeah. yeah what happens to him when he gets that the, the big yeah, mask yeah, on the prosthetic that he ends up wearing for oh god he wore that for what felt like weeks <laughs> oh and he comes, he comes, here he comes again dark again and we had to shoot this a few times because of the the floor is all different levels and actually we had to try and get it make the look, to go from yeah. one end to the other smoothly yeah Brilliant! This that he goes to the end and surveys Manhattan, and Brilliant. so the um, the point of view, the Dalek's point of view shot that we're about to see, we shot at that from the top of the Empire State yep. Building, didn't we? Yep, we went it. up there at um, um, four a.m. Uh, before now, it, it opened. You weren't going to come up, were you? Nope, you, you I was. I was. I was really was apprehensive because <laughs> I'm. I'm terribly afraid of heights. Aww. Really afraid of heights, and more than it's not necessarily even the height, it's the kind of journey up there, the lift, mm. really, that I always start panicking in. And I just sort of, in my kind of mind's eye, I can just see miles of empty space yawning away underneath me. That map painter, just to say quickly, the um, the attention to detail that the mill it's have done, and it's amazing because that's the smoke modern, and all yeah, of that, yeah, modern day New York, but they've had to paint out all of the buildings, so they've gone mm. through it in a fine tooth comb and taken out, taken everything out, everything out that. Um, is not authentic to the period, yeah. so it's brilliant. It's brilliant a beautiful job. show. But yes, the, the, we're top of the Empire State Building. But actually, if you're going up in the lift, you go so quickly, you don't... Oh, even... you're, you're up there in, I think, I think it's about 30 seconds, yeah. isn't it, or something? And so we went there, four o'clock in the morning. It helped that I think I was half asleep still. And went up there at four o'clock in the morning before it was open to the public, and we saw, and we filmed and saw the sunrise, mm. um, which was just... Absolutely, the most beautiful thing I think I've ever seen. It was quite a special Incredible. moment, wasn't it, to, well, see, to see the was sunrise? To stand and... up there and see, in a way that not many people have seen, I imagine, because you know it's not sort of open at that time of day to anybody. Yeah, it's only so open it... really in daylight. Well, I suppose at night in the winter, but no, but you can't you can't normally go up there and watch yeah. the sunrise and stuff. And it was cold, though, wasn't it? Because it was yeah. actually quite warm on the ground. But when it got that high. So cold. It was freezing. It was absolutely freezing. We all had huge overcoats on. But, but it was an incredible thing to do, to just be allowed to go up there with nobody else. Yeah. So peaceful, wasn't it? Mm. And it's not that scary, is it? No. You, Actually, in somehow the end, it doesn't feel... In the end, it was. I, I was just quite moved by the whole thing. Mm. Uh, yeah, that always kind of overtook me. But I actually, the truth is, I wasn't going to let you all go up and not have me there too. I'm going to. I don't think that. we'd have let you either. Nah. <laughs> so again, we've gone down from one set in the lift, and the same lift has come out uh, in, in another the, location in a place called Trident Park, and we uh, filmed there the first time in um, for for part of some of the corridors in the Christmas um, special that we just did, the Runaway Bride, and. Um, we, we discovered this amazing location that we've used actually quite a lot. I think in our in our third series, the series that we're just finishing now, this has been the most used location. I think it's been all sorts of things. But um, this this kind of pillared hole here um, just felt right, didn't it? It was whole, perfect the, for the... The fact that the concrete's so new and shiny and it felt like it's at the yeah. bottom of the Empire State Building. It felt like it was the foundations of a, of a huge building, which... Um... 
you know, it worked brilliant. And then they kind of with its big pillars that the Daleks could kind of come in between. And yeah, you had to work quite hard to convince me about it. I thought there were yeah, too many pillars. I mean, it's in not here. as but big a space. Right. It's not as big a space as you'd maybe want, ideally. But we so the job was to make it look as big as yeah. possible. It does look so. wonderful though. And there's a great. It feels so much. It just feels like they've installed themselves. Yeah, there. that's what I love about it. Yeah, that you know, it feels really lashed up and kind of imagine they they sort of beamed through the time rift or whatever and got and and, and took themselves there and sort of just had to scratch their yeah. tin heads and say, well, <laughs> yeah, what yeah. do we do now? <laughs> Get a few pigs <laughs> together, a few human beings, cross them, and we're laughing. And there we go. It was also the cold. It actually was the coldest place I've ever filmed, though. Because it was like a tomb in there in that yeah. in December, wasn't it? We were filming it. Was it December? November. Uh, November. November. Yeah. Very November. cold, but it did look. Amazing. And it was a very cold November. <sighs> we had a really harsh couple of months, really November and end of October, November. Yeah. So again, we're trying to make the most of the sets here, making all the different alleyways. And yeah, you'd different... never know that was the yeah. set they just walked up. I think it's wonderful. Sort of that cold grill there that, that just makes it feel different. It's lovely. And here's the pig that we saw at the very beginning, Paul Casey. Yes, Paul who's Casey. now here, the same pig. Um, I think this is the shot you were talking about with his eyes. He looks so yeah, sad. Yeah, this he... moment there <clears> when <throat> the doctor comes up and sort of talks to him and stuff. Yeah. Also, I think the sound effects, the, well, the sound team have done with the sound effects of making it feel like all the putting a sound effect for every drip and the echo and mm. that that really um evokes the, the the feeling that you're in these tunnels and dank and it's wet yeah. and it's damp and yeah and you wouldn't even notice it but without it you just don't really it would be so empty yeah but they do they're brilliant, brilliant mask as well it I is a, yeah. really truly brilliant but look at him look at his eyes he looks so sad yeah well, I don't think you'd be too happy yourself would you, if you woke <laughs> up and looked in the mirror and that had happened to you. No, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. It's not you'd have a word. But, uh, <laughs> I, I think for me as well, the, the the pigs, the pig men, especially especially as you this bit here when the group of them, this for me is one of the most scariest. I've seen lots of monsters on Doctor Who, and and you know, but these because they're pigs and they're kind of something they, carnal and yeah, visceral carnival about, about them, about them yeah, and, they're, yeah. and they're sort of grotesqueness about them. Yeah. I think they're just. Absolutely horrific, and again, it's the guys playing them, they the really they all, all look the same as well. Yeah, the boiler suits, and the, the, but each one of the pigs has got its own little bit of personality, yeah. and um, um, yeah. I just find this the, the prospect, the, the notion of being chased by a load of pig men. Oh, lordy. Oh, absolutely terrifying. You see, some of the ears are turned down because when we first saw them, do you remember the ears were up and yeah, they looked and a bit I cute. Think we all said they looked a bit mousy. Yeah, <laughs> sort of a bit dormousy, really, and a bit cute. And I think that, that we sort of, so we got we got um, Neil Gorton's people to sort of bend down yeah. the ears. So here's an example of what you were talking about earlier. So they they climb up that sewer set, yeah, and they Here climb they into um, Headland School at the top there. Um, so obviously in our sewer we had to have a little bit of a return at the top of the ladder so you could just see up it. Yeah, and then in our Headland School set we had a bit of a. Return below, yeah, that, a bit, that, but it's really hard. You've got to be really careful with the angle. So that, well, you can't... it was just enough for them to start the descent yeah. into it, wasn't it? Really. So when Frank gets taken here, and then you go, and then he goes, and, and go. then now we're in Headlands up now here. We're in Headlands School, yeah. So that's so between the two, and it really works. You really feel the, you know, it's very seamless. I think again, really clever. It's your great shot there. You're I love that shot of the gun coming, uh, just a little... Film noir. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, he comes running in a lovely dress that she only wears in this and the next scene. Um, yeah. But she looks gorgeous in it. She's great. Again, that, that one of the things I love about these two episodes is just how well realised these characters all are. They're yeah. such... You know exactly who they are within... Five lines of of what they say, and they yeah, so, they're yeah, so yeah. beautifully drawn. I think by Helen, she did such a great job. And the, and the, all the departments working together, the costumes, the costumes, mm. the, you know, were, the costumes are amazing. Louise Page, Lu- oh, lovely, Louise. fabulous costume designer. Everybody Louise looks Tyler. incredible. And yeah, they do. I love the way Solomon's kind of again. He's got that brown muted shades that we had yeah. from Hoover, and like I said I wanted them all to reflect their environments yeah. and. So Tallulah's a bit more kind of glamorous and, and sequins and diamonds and stuff. 
And a great wig there on Miranda, I think. Sort of very Jean Harlow. Yeah, it? yeah, you yeah, because yeah, you'd think it was a real hair. Actually, yeah, you, you yeah. would never believe it was a wig. Because you've got very short, kind really of spiky short, hair. Really short, spiky hair. It's a wonderful wig. Barbara Southcott, our makeup designer, responsible for that. But yeah, it's true. They had their hands full on that block, and this block will, will them, will them go go dancers. All the dancers <laughs> and, the, and, and all the extras who all had to look ill and pale, and oh, it was a mammoth job for them, actually. Yeah, the, this was originally, this scene was set up in the gods, I remember. Yes, it was. And it? Uh, when we came to schedule the episode, we had too much. Um, Material to film in the in the real theatre that we haven't seen yet, but um, and so uh, we had to decide what we could take away from that location and put into our studio set. So this was one of those mm. scenes. What I think is amazing in the whole process, actually, every time it's when these things happen, when you have to move a scene or you cut a scene or you and you think, oh, I'm really going to miss that, or oh, I'm not sure it'll work, and then in the end result, you just it's. You can't imagine it being anywhere yeah, else. Yeah, you can't, can you? And the, or that you don't miss anything that gets cut. Yeah. It's, it's amazing the way it, it kind of all comes together, really, in mm. the end. Yeah, I, I think um, it, it's... Especially in something as rich as this, where you've yeah. got so many different locations. That's the thing. You can do that, really. Well, yeah. also that scene, I was just thinking, actually, that scene there was a much longer scene as it was written, and we, and we shot it, and there's a lot of actual... There's another sort of set of exchanges between Solomon and the Doctor, which we've, you know, Russell actually decided in the end we didn't need them, and he's right. We d- you don't need them, but at the time you think, oh, just because the actors did a great job, because they would have done, you kind of yeah. think you feel. Well, like, I think know. that happens, you know, it, it, in it's most the episodes. Job. There's that sort of filleting that yeah. goes on at the editing stage when you actually sit back and, and watch it as a finished program, and you and you, you there are. Things that you take out that you can't believe you were, would ever have taken out yeah. at script stage. Yeah. You can't imagine you'd ever not have mm. some of that information. In there. This is my favourite line in the whole thing: "Hide a chicane and her broken ankle," <laughs> which uh, which had nothing to do with Tallulah. <laughs> of course, I really, I think it did. Don't you? I think she was there. I think she was greasing those stairs. <laughs> That night, as she was, as, as Heidi Chicane was running black, down, black ice at the back, st- the, yeah. the stage door. <laughs> <laughs> few, few ball bearings on the stairs, definitely. I love this bit of Tallulah as well when she goes, jumps between being really upset, and then now she's over it, <laughs> and she's uh, back on with the, the next bit of the story. Yeah. She's not going to be upset for long. Now, you wouldn't notice, but on the posters as well, on the walls, you've got little photographs of, of Miranda, which the art department have put into the actual posters. But The, the one at the back there that says yeah. New York Review. New York Review. There's, it's, it's all Miranda's photos um, put into Brilliant. Tallulah's photos and stuff. Brilliant. No, and again, the costume. We have to say something yeah. about the costume. Big debate on the size of the wings. Amazing. A big yeah. debate about Lou, how big those wings <laughs> should be. And they were... They, if they were too big, she'd look like something out of Hawkman from Flash Gordon. Yeah. Um, they're amazing. So, they're perfect. They're wonderful. So Beautiful. fluffy and white. They're just perfect. So here we are. This is real rain, <laughs> not a rain machine. <laughs> and this is what it did for five nights. It absolutely poured down. Although we were very lucky after today. But uh, this was... I remember giving you phoning and going, Phil, it's pouring down... Carry on, so we carried on because, and actually, it looks amazing. I mean, you sort I think of it does. It looks stunning, it, and it's weird. This is the way it, it suited the scene and, this, and the desperation of them all, and, yeah. and they're in the rain. And yeah. um, I can't remember to decide whether we give Solomon his coat or not, and because and actually, it looks far more heroic. Somehow, makes it feel more epic, doesn't yeah. it? In a funny kind of way. Uh, and they are less they... just amazing. There we are, right on the top. So here we're on the heliport in Cardiff. Uh, where we filmed David going up the um, the mast at Alexander Palace, and and we filmed the, uh, the the rope ladder flying sequence from the Cybermen episodes in the last series. It's a, it, it's yeah, it's a heliport, and it, it's very high up, so there is no um, there's no buildings or anything on the horizon, and all that you can see the mill have put in Manhattan. Um, and it was actually quite a tall structure, wasn't it? We built it was it was it's actually quite about thirty t- foot. Yeah, so you're on top ground, of that, you it, you feel crikey, it's quite so high. So it was high. Anyway, but it, again, wonderful kind of seamless way that the that, 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 um, design department and the and the mill work together so yeah. cleverly and closely to tie those things together and make you really feel like you're up there. 
Now this was a big. Uh, so we're back down in the in the lab and we're just about to get to the bit where where um, kind of Mr. Digress gets taken inside. And there's a big discussion about how we were going to do this, wasn't there? About how we could. Well, we, how he was. Well, get you'll see that the Dalek now is um, the, the the black Dalek um, is about to open up. Oh, I've spoiled it for you now. Um, I've seen it before. The opening up we've seen before in episode um, six, but the the real challenge about um, about for for this episode was that um, as you're about to see, he opens up, um, and we needed uh, Mister Diagoras there to be absorbed inside um, the base of the Dalek. Well, of course, a, a Dalek on on the set there is. Well, there's a little man inside it yeah. steering it, and there is really no room, no room under there. So, it took us a good old bit of head scratching, didn't it, to yep. work out just how the CGI was going to work. The brilliant bit there that you notice, I don't know if you missed that, but you see um, the back of the Daleks fashioned out of tin because he's the one who's donated his sort of baubles <laughs> for their plan. He's good. Yeah. So here we go. So the Dalek opens up now, um, revealing the creature. Because we're discussing inside. whether it should have. Sucked him, not not pulled him all the way in, but then yeah. actually, well, then he, but he has to, yeah. And that what happen. And the detail on that shot is beautiful. I think I love the way the screen folds away. Yeah. And and who knew that the Dalek had such massive, powerful tentacles? My goodness, this is hideous. I think. <laughs> I mean, that is just horrible. Can you imagine? Whoa, look at that. Oh, look. Off he goes. He's going to cook for a bit. And another piece of slime. There's so much green slime in this episode. There is a lot of green slime. So much green slime. So here we are in the gods of um, a theatre which was... Triochi. In Triochi, yes. It's up in the... Um, the valleys, really. The valleys, yeah. About half an hour from our studios. In the most boat. amazing, beautiful theatre in, in the middle of a mining village, really. I know, it's a beautiful a theatre from... Well, it's from the... It's yeah, 30s, 30s, 1930s. Yeah, 20 days, Very unspoiled. Yeah. I think it's a cinema now, isn't it? I know they still have they still have theatre pantos and theatre and stuff and music. A real find that place was though, because we didn't have to do very much. No, in fact, I don't think we did anything. (laughs) I think we put the backdrop on the on the stage, Mm -hmm. um, and and everything else is exactly as if you go in there tonight and see a see something. It's um, yeah, it was a real find. Here we go. So this is. I have to say, not my favourite sequence in the world. I mean, I think the dancing is beautiful. I love Miranda. I think the choreography is amazing. But I sort of just felt disappointed by the set, really. You think we should have had a bit more something? Well, I, don't, I just wish the stage had something else on it. You know, mm. the, the curtain sort of almost looks like it's just sort of hanging there. It all feels very bare, that's all. And I imagine it was so much more vibrant than that. And yeah. You know, some sort of scenery, and I don't know. Although I do think the um, it means means you focus on the girls, which was kind of yeah. I they guess didn't want so. to distract from I guess so. from these amazing. Costumes. I mean, it's very beautifully shot, and and you know, <laughs> who am I to complain? You know, but it, it it I was I was disappointed when I saw these rushes. I have to say, we were meant to have a glitter ball, and it didn't turn up. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which, so I don't know glitter ball's the, fault. I don't know if that would have made all the difference, but um. So there is our first glimpse at Ryan Carnes in his pig mask. Ryan, the, the chap who was attacked by the pig at the very top, um, Cholula's boyfriend, who has now been half turned into a pig. I sort of wonder what happened that day. Do you think they had a power cut or something? As yeah, I don't know how he... Pigified? It says he escaped. I don't quite know how, <laughs> what he so did. He escaped as they were in mid yeah, it must have been transformation. Pain- it must have been quite really. painful, I yeah, But, yeah. um, yes, <laughs> he, he, he does... It's a clever idea. He's kind of retained the characteristics. And yeah. Again, the, the the funny thing about the the mask he wears, it really accentuates his eyes. And, yeah, and he's it does. In, he has such sad eyes too. And it, although it looks much smaller than the real pig masks, actually it took longer to get ready because it's mm. it's actually completely moulded to his face. And, yes. Um, it used so to take it, him about three hours in makeup. Oh, I never actually. Wouldn't have recognised Ryan. No. If, um, actually, if you'd noticed, that's not Ryan who runs on that page. That's, that's, a, that's a lookalike. Is that a double? Because it was we had to shoot that after after he'd gone. After he'd gone, so um, uh, you can tell it's not him if you if you look if you very your DVD. closely. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, it took him hours, and um, I forgot what he looked like. I took, Ryan came yeah. into the the um, lunch bus, and I was like, "Oh, it's <laughs> it's Ryan! It's Ryan!" 
tap you on the shoulder. Oh, yeah. now Martha's... Martha's copped it. There was a bit, it was a bit longer, this scene, wasn't it? And, and we ran out of time to shoot sort of the descent into the manhole and stuff. Yeah, again, there was, all, there was lots of a preamble, and actually it all kind it of works. It works. Now. You there never miss it. Again, out into one set, into another one. Into and another. Now he's climbing through the roof, in fact, of, the, of, the, of our set in, that the we built. The basement set. Mm. Um, I mean, I love the water reflections that Ernie's put on the wall in that. Really lovely. These shots, it's beautiful. And that amazing coat Miranda wears. Yeah. Just amazing. It's like a movie star in it. Great. Another wonderful pair of eyes on the... It's interesting because it's another, almost another companion for the Doctor yeah, in this episode. I love that when that happens. I mean, we, sort of you know, up. we do try and do that quite often, that we team them up with yeah. new people and it, it sort of gives them new... sort of new directions to go in, I suppose, as characters, you know, and you can... The, you can find amazing things out about your regular characters just by putting them with a different with person with yeah. a different outlook. Yeah. And, and and again, it's great in this episode that they that there are sort of people, Frank and, and Tallulah, who sort of do become mini companions for our people, for our, for the Doctor and Martha. Now, again, this was another massively long chat here that we kind of, mm. in the end, just commuted a little bit. Um, I love this. This is one of my favorite. It's my favorite shot. I think just that. Well, we wanted shot that, didn't we? Yeah. Because uh, there is a quite a there is a shot. I think it is in the Five Doctors. I remember when an old episode of Doctor Who, and where a Dalek comes around the corner, the first thing you see is its shadow, and yeah. it's so creepy. <laughs> and we managed to do it. It's brilliant. Part of also the reason, obviously, for us. Um, building this set was that we'd never have got Daleks to <laughs> run, trundle through <laughs> a real sewer, sewers. Yeah. It would be just too bumpy. We, 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 I can't bear it when the eye stalks bump and bounce. I think a bit of the magic wears away. Because although they're an amazing design, they're actually quite fragile, aren't they? They're We're... terribly fragile. The tiniest bump makes that sort of eye stalk bounce and <laughs> you have to be very careful that the floor is absolutely smooth. Yeah. Completely smooth, but then once they once they've got that smooth, the guys inside can yeah. manoeuvre them around. Oh, they're amazingly, brilliant. they're amazing on a turn yeah. on a sixpence, and it's a, a t- incredibly demanding job. I think. Have you been inside? One? One Have you been there again? I actually haven't. No, I, I do keep meaning to. It's really. I mean, imagine it's terribly difficult, it's incredibly claustrophobic, yeah. and then to be in there to just move your feet and also move the. Do all, all of the other little bits to give, oh, hats off to it's them. It's kind right? of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at yes, the same exactly time, isn't that, it? Exactly, it's a real. That. And they have to be choreographed. I mean, yeah. they're like they are like a dance troupe, really. I mean, they have to move in and out of each other so gracefully yeah. and, and and elegantly. But what's is, what's great is when you because each Dalek's got its own actor, which is who's inside, mm-hmm. and you block it as you block it with a normalcy with the other, rest of the actors, and and then the guys kind of sit and squat. Like they're in Dalek mode, yeah, yeah. and then you block them just as you would normal actors, yeah. but they're they're the Daleks, and then they come on set. With the, <laughs> you know, there it's nothing quite like it when and the set is there when <laughs> they're on. It's amazing. No, there's nothing like it actually. It is totally just exciting. It's so mm. iconic when they when they come on mm. set. It, you, nothing nothing beats it. It's brilliant, and it makes such a difference having Nick there with his. He, Nick feeds the voice in live on yes. the set, and it makes such a difference. I don't imagine they always did that before. I don't know whether that whether they did or not, but no, there must have been a lot of, of doing it afterwards and stuff. Mm. Which actually was what we had to do with Ryan with those teeth. The in teeth his... really stopped him. They really limited <laughs> his ability to speak, didn't they? Really, not exactly <laughs> a brilliant thing for us to have done to him. So a lot of his dialogue, just but all of it was post sunk, which yes. means after uh, after filming, he had to go into a sound studio um, and and lip sync with himself to picture. Which I had to do in Los Angeles. You went to LA to do that. Which was uh, a terrible... You've been abound on this a, job. I got my air miles up on this job. Um, yeah. Sure, but I had to go through US Customs with the teeth. <laughs> and you didn't. I did. So, so I get did stopped at US you? Customs and, he, and he's like, sure, what, what's this? It's like, um, it's some false teeth for a pig man who's, <laughs> who's playing a show, a TV show that. called Doctor... Doctor what is this? So... Oh, how hilarious. And, and the thing was, they started... Well, you should have just told them they were yours. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have got away with it. Well, either maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe put them on. <laughs> but the thing was, they started... I don't know why, but they started sweating. So they were all wet in this... And oh, so these wet, dripping wet, bag dripping of sweaty teeth. false teeth. 
Um, I'm amazed you made it through. After an 11 hour flight to Los Angeles, it was. I'm uh, amazed you made it through. But, um, <laughs> we survived. But um, yes, so we had to do all of his, a lot of his dialogue. Uh, Not this show. Look how moving this scene is. Uh, and a, she's talking to a half transformed pig. And she's touching his collar in exactly the same way they touched yeah. collars in the first scene. It's, yeah. it's, it's great. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so lovely. So sad. And brilliant for aesthetics as well. I mean, even mm. right that close, they stand close, up. They look, it really stands up. It looks it. just like it's his face. It's, it's amazing. Oh. Really wow. heartbreaking. I love all the guys who play the other pigmen as well. They're all... They were just a nice bunch of... And again, they're a blokes. real team. They're, they're, <laughs> yeah. they're often our people. They were ouds for the you ood. last year. And, yeah. And they've been Cybermen and various creatures, really. Faceless people. And, yeah, they've been all kinds of things. And because of get, take, usually with the costumes, they'd take them off in between takes. But, but with the pigs, they couldn't. Those, they? So you'd walk along the set and they'd always sat there reading the paper. The and... pigs would read the paper or they'd be smoking. <laughs> yeah. or, I, I know, it, would, it used to make me <laughs> howl with laughter to see them all sat around. And they're working away. All their mouths are going and their snouts are going. Oh, and they get into they it. They really they're are. so into it. They're they? fantastic. So this was something you had to think about really quite carefully, where to position the Doctor. And, yeah, this was tricky because the, cause the set and, was, uh, wasn't was that long. But So we had to kind of yeah. believe that the Doctor was watching from afar, but it couldn't be seen. And I think we just... I would have I would have probably liked the corridor to have been just a touch longer. But... Yeah. You kind of get away with it, I think. Um, I think you more than get away with it. I think it really works. It looks brilliant. But I know what you mean. It would have been nice if it had been longer. But I think we say but that every yes, time. Exactly, don't exactly. You don't, you don't mind. Um, I think by pushing as far as we push, it's, yeah. it gets us further than we would if we hadn't. Oh, absolutely, far, absolutely. Yeah, it, kind of, it, it does work. Oh, good. <laughs> Miranda's great again. Still, don't yeah. They? She's just so into that character, isn't she? She's so completely different as yeah. well. It was a real, a real actor's piece for her. Well, and also she's the only. She's not American. She's, she's no. She's it's an. It's she's, she's acting the voice and she's. Yeah. I know she did a lot of work on getting that. I remember once we had a um, our script continuity picked her up on on a pronunciation, and actually she, Miranda was right because she. Actually, been to an, an American voice coach and had learned oh, it. Oh, had she really? Absolutely verbatim. It was. It was. Um, her accent is is brilliant. As is um, Andrew Garfield's there, who plays Frank. I think his accent in this is just wonderful because he is an American. He was born in America and uh, raised in England, but he's an American and he's got American parents. His parents are American. I remember. Yeah. But his but range he, of accents. He was raised here, though. Yeah, wasn't he it? was raised here. Yeah, but his range of accents is such a so impressive. He could. We decided which part of America Frank, the character, was going to come from, and he then came on set with that accent as if, he, or as if he'd grown Midwest. up in Missouri with, in the Midwest you know, since birth. It was a yeah. brilliant performance. Incredible, wonderful actor. Again, adds just authenticity to yeah, that. Yeah, it does, thing. it does. That accent. This was a right old wrangle, having all the, the Daleks all these and pig Daleks, men. And, pig and, men arguing with each other at the back there. Look, they're having a right old ding-dong yeah. at the back there, aren't they? <laughs> Well, also because I told him, look, you're meant to be distracted. <laughs> you're not meant to notice that the doctor's. So I had him having a bit of a ding dong. <laughs> a bit of a ding dong. Um, the gloves are off. <laughs> <laughs> it always makes me laugh that moment. <laughs> <laughs> so pathetic. Bless her. Bless her. So here we are back in the transgenic lab. Um, so real is... fire, all the flames going. I, I wanted it to feel a bit like the Wizard of Oz in there, you know, those yeah. big whooshes of flame, and or, or Frankenstein's laboratory or something. So there's a yeah. real sort of gothic horror about yeah. the place. I mean, this was a big deal because look at it's just so many people involved and just... well, all I mean, this is a big old physical effects number. Yeah, um, the physical effects guys from any effects who are pumping in flame and. Pumping smoke through the Dalek casing as he's cooking there. You've got four guys in each one of the Daleks and you've got oh, six pigmen and all the cast and the Doctor and Martha in the middle of it all. It was So a... how did we do all that smoke in coming out the Dalek when there's a man in there? Well, operating? there's somebody hidden just behind shaking the Dalek. Yeah. And then Danny, the effects guy, just before the take, filled it with smoke. So we didn't actually have somebody inside. There we go. Well, we did for one take, actually. No, we did for one take because there was and no way around it. Out. And he just oh, held his breath in between me. takes and sort of took the lid off. And he was like, <gasps> one more, OK. The <gasps> things we put people through. Bless him. <laughs> that pig behind him, look. 
Yeah. But um, yes, no, it was. Um, I mean, it's really hats off to the guys who sit in those Daleks and mm. hours a day, hours. eleven hours a day. I think it's Phil Shellard who's just actually just shaking that Dalek behind. He's just shaking it, and of course the the ice dock and the and everything else moves yeah. independently with the remote control, yeah. isn't it? And this is that we, we built a green screen box, so Eric yeah. on the day climbs out of a green screen green box, box that he's then, then painted in. Yeah, and then the, the, the Dalek's painted around put in the Dalek him. back and then the round. Absolutely and... grotesque this moment. We had to pop in a close up there, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did because we we actually couldn't get the proper, the, 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 quite right the the, yeah. the the step out of the box quite to sync up. So we had to cut away from the shot um, momentarily. So we popped in an extra close up of our team. And there it is. And there it is. So that is actually the actor who played Mister Diagoras, Eric Lauren, wearing that prosthetic. Yep. Yeah. And absolutely, so the, it's an amazing piece of the work. The eye and all the all the tentacles are all Everything kind of human, human, are all remote controlled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that absolutely threw it, flew past, didn't it? I loved that episode. I think you did such a wonderful job on that. James. Bless you. Thank and you. No, very I much. do. I think I think it's astonishing, and just you know, you just weren't phased by the size of it, by by the whole recreation of kind of New York. In oh, it was Cardiff. great. It was just a great. <laughs> Which, let's be honest, isn't something you get to do every day. No, but uh, you know we'll rise to the challenge wherever possible. It was good. It was a great. It was great to do a kind of good old fashioned kind of. Because we did a cycle before yeah. to do a good old fashioned period piece, but, yeah. but deliver you know the scale of, of and make it feel like you're actually in a believable world. It's thirties mm. New York stuff, but um, a lot of. A lot of your time in, in a period episode like that has to be spent on the details, yes, doesn't it? Making on it, making, making sure it right all the bits tie in yeah. together, the the you know, the costumes fit with yeah. the design, fits with yeah. the kind of vision of the piece. Is, yeah. is, Which sets up, I think, the episode two, with this one here, coming five, where where it all kicks off, really, and we just yeah. it's a kind of roller coaster of adventure. Yeah, it it's, is. It's just great. It's, it's a really lovely episode that I really enjoyed it. Enormously. Well, thank well you done. for the opportunity, and I loved it too.